Love to watch curling, especially during the Olympics? Sure you do, because you're interesting and you're fun and you're a good person. But at times, you're a little confused, maybe a lot confused. That's okay. We're USA Curling, and we're here to help. Start by knowing the basics. Games are divided into ends, 10 ends at the Olympics. An end is complete when each team's eight stones or rocks are delivered, 16 stones in total each end. All players throw two rocks per end in the same order throughout the game according to their position on the team. The lead throws the first two, the second throws the next two, the third throws two after that, and then the skip, sort of like the team captain, throws the final two stones of each end. Stones slide down a sheet of ice nearly 150 feet long. The objective? Finish the end with more stones closer to the center of the house, that's the target-like thing in the ice that's also sometimes called the rings, than the opposition. Only one team scores in an end, so if your team has a whole bunch of your own rocks in the house, but the other team finishes the end with one that is closer, they score a point, and you get a big fat zero in that end. There are three basic shots in curling. Guards, they're the ones short of the house, and please don't call them blockers. Draws, they're typically somewhere in the house. Takeouts, that's when you knock an opposition stone out of play. Of course, within these shots, there are about a gazillion variations with names like freeze, hit and roll, and come around to name just a few. Pros know them all. Sweeping or brushing takes a rock farther down the ice than it would go without sweeping. As much as 10 to 12 feet farther. If you're a pro, you also know that sweeping doesn't actually make the rock go faster. It slows the rate of deceleration. Sweeping also helps players control how much a rock curls as it moves down the ice because, yeah, it's called curling. That's why you'll see players sweeping a rock even when it's moving really fast. Depending on which side of the rock the sweeper is on and the direction of the brushing motion, sweeping can make a rock curl more or less. And if players want a rock to slow down, they don't sweep it at all. No, curlers aren't like that mean boss you had who screamed at everyone. That guy. Curlers are actually shouting instructions and encouragement to their teammates who are sweeping the stone. They say things like, HARD! Because they want their teammates to brush or sweep really vigorously. And let's be honest, it sounds better than, TRY MORE! They'll yell lots of other things too, including, WHOA! when they want their teammates to stop sweeping, and sometimes they'll yell a teammate's name so only that person sweeps. A lot of people new to curling think they might have better ideas on strategy than, say, Olympic athletes. Uh, they don't. If you're new to curling, you might think the best shot is to just put a stone right in the middle of the house, right on the bullseye. First, to sound like a pro, don't call it the bullseye. It's the button or the lid if you want to bring a little extra to the conversation. There are times when a player needs to put their stone right on the button, but not all the time and rarely in the early parts of an end. What top players really do is figure out how to make shots that make their opponent's shots difficult. A stone just sitting wide open in the middle of the house is easy for elite players to remove, so it's not a place to put a stone early in an end. That's why you'll often see leads throw guards. Other stones can go behind those stones later in the end. Teams also can't remove an opposition rock that is in front of, but not in the house, until five rocks have been played. It's called the free guard zone. Throw that term around like a pro when you're watching with a bunch of people. So guards often go up in front of the house and the decision making begins. Teams may try to curl a stone around the guard or ignore it and put their stone open on the side. And then maybe after five rocks have been thrown, someone on either team might throw a stone really hard and knock a bunch of stones in all directions. Lots of times they won't even care if their own rock goes out of play too. Sometimes that'll be the plan. 
What's the main point here? Curling strategy is complex, and if you're a pro, you know that. The hammer is the last rock thrown in an end or in the game. Who has last rock dictates the strategy of both teams. The team with last rock is trying to score two or more points, unless they just need one point in the last end to win the game. The team without last rock is trying to hold their opponent to a single point, or even better, steal a point. The team that scores a point or points in an end will not have last rock in the next end, except if nobody scores and it's a blank end, and then the same team keeps, that's right, the hammer in the next end. Curling pros know all about mixed doubles, introduced at the Olympics in 2018. In mixed doubles, teams have two players, one female, one male, because you know, it's called mixed doubles. It's got rocks and ice, and it's pretty much just like traditional curling, except the teams throw five rocks per end instead of eight, and each end starts with two rocks placed in play, and games are eight ends instead of ten, and you can't knock any rocks out of play until four rocks have been thrown, and there's this thing called the power play, and well, you get the idea, it's curling, but different and exciting with lots of rocks in play. Pay attention and you'll know this version like a pro too. Pros know that curling at the highest levels is really hard. They also know that curling of any kind is a ton of fun. So go to find a curling club near me at usacurling.org and discover a place to play in your area. You might not make the next Olympics, but you'll probably become sort of obsessed with the sport once you try it. Sign up for a learn to curl, then get out on the ice and try sliding and yelling at your friends and making shots sort of like you saw on TV. Before long, you'll be watching curling just like a pro and playing it sort of like one. 